Hey guys, I'm Brandon Jury. In this episode of Killing with Cubase, we're going to give you an introduction to Cubase. Okay, this video, I kind of want to give you a walkthrough of Cubase and uh, just kind of give you a brief introduction how the whole damn thing works. Um, I've got a, a track I've been working on, um, or a song, I guess you could say. Uh, it's not really finished or anything, but um, it's probably a complete and total mess and possibly the worst pos uh, example imaginable. It's probably just going to confuse the hell out of you, but hopefully here with having a real-world explanation will make, make sense some of the stuff. Okay, uh, one thing about Cubase is I don't know like a lot of the formal terms. I mean, like this thing, I think it's called the project window. I don't know. I just call it the thing. Um, there, there's not really a formal, I mean, every software company has got to name it something different and it's annoying and there's no proprietary. It's not like we all agree that, okay, this is a fader. And so work with me on this stuff. When you look in the manual, you'll probably see things, uh, have different titles and they probably aren't using thingy and doodad and doohickey. Okay. So, um, this is the project window and it's where all, basically most of the work happens. Um, you can see here I've got all kinds of, I'm gonna make them small, got all kinds of tracks and we've got um, the tan color which is the MIDI tracks and I use these and I send them out to uh, my hardware synth which you can't see here, they're my racks. Um, we could also send them over here to VST Instruments and a good example here is this battery one right here and that's going to this battery synth uh, well, not really synth sampler, but anyway. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! Okay, so you get the idea there. And so that's a MIDI track. And then we have our audio tracks, which I've re already re recorded off of the synth, a uh, hardware synth in this particular case. Um, so. Okay, and that was came off of a Korg, uh, what's that, MS-2000, but okay. So there's an audio track, um, and the same thing here, with the, say the Smog bass here. All right, so there's our audio tracks, and that could be vocals, acoustic guitar, I mean, it doesn't have to be synth stuff, it could be uh, banjos and, and snare drums, things of that sort, vocals. Okay, so those are audio tracks, and then, and those are blue. So it was the MIDI tracks are beige, and it's, I want to point out that these MIDI tracks are just MIDI, they're just data, and you have to send them somewhere. In this case, I got it going out, uh, my MIDI stuff, and that looks complicated, but like here in the battery case, I have to select battery 3. And so uh, that MIDI doesn't do anything until it hits something like battery 3, which actually makes a sound. So uh, anyway, so we keep that in mind, because with battery 3, the... Uh, Let's go ahead and loop this, and I'll, I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about. Pull the volume down some. Uh, oops. Okay, so here's the drums. They're going out this guy here, and then they're coming back on the output of the battery um, uh, sampler over here. And I've got it kind of fancy because I've got multiple tracks coming out, usually one uh, instrument. Shut up, dog. You're making noise. I'm trying to be professional. <laughs> Um, over here we've got multiple things. See, so there's like, see that's my snare here, and then my kick there. But again, that's fancy stuff. But anyway, the point is, is these um, kind of these greenish brown, at least on my my system here, uh, colors are um, outputs from um, virtual instruments. Okay, and moving on, so those can be seen here as well. Everything in Cubase generally has a duplicate, and not to be complicated, but actually be simpler. You can pick the the way you like best. Okay, and then we have group tracks, which are um, ways where you can combine multiple tracks into one and process them as a group, and still allow us to process each individual each individual track on its own. And we'll get into that stuff later, but those are green, and you can see those there. Oh, yeah. And then we have uh, effects channels, which are basically auxiliary sends. It's a little a little bit fuzzy because the, the different analog mixers and um, software have parallels, but computers are, you know, really they're better in terms of what they can do, functionality at least. And so 
um, if we wanted to send like a reverb, or in this case, I'm using the Roland RA201, which is a UAD, kind of a vintage reverb delay kind of box. Okay, and so what other tracks we got? And if we wanted to add more tracks, uh, let's see, make this small. We come down here, or you know, when you don't have a million tracks like I do, you come down here, right? What in the hell just happened there? Oh, folder. All right. Uh, you right click, and this is where you can add audio tracks, um, MIDI tracks, effects channel, the aux auxiliary send tracks, the group channel tracks, and there's a bunch of other junk you can do in, in Cubase. And something I want to stress here is <clears throat> in Cubase, you don't have to learn everything. Let me repeat that while I take a sip of coffee. You don't have to learn everything. Ah, you can, uh, Cubase is designed to be all things to all people all the time. And because of that, it has so many features in it, it that you'll never need. And so if you attempt to learn this entire uh, monstrosity, uh, you're going to go crazy. And there's really no point because you don't need all this stuff. I don't know anybody who uses everything in Cubase. And if you're a, a folk singer kind of guy, it's acoustic guitar and a vocal, uh, you won't need hardly any of it. I mean, you'll be using like 8% of what's in there. And that doesn't mean it's overkill. It doesn't mean that it's too much for you. It means just ignore the junk you don't need. Um, just because your truck has a trailer hitch doesn't mean you have to pull a trailer. It's just nice to have in case you ever do. And that's that's the, a big thing and a big point that is using mature software. So um, it's so much better because when you do run into a, a hitch, huh, trailer hitch, huh, you run into a problem, um, it's nice knowing that somebody already thought so in depth that there probably is a solution. And Cubase is awesome about having solutions for, for just about everything I can think of. So I've been really impressed by that. And I would expect the same thing from Logic and Pro Tools and Digital Performer, um, any of the, of the really top stuff. So anyway, I think it, there is a, a, a good argument for getting good stuff because you will hit a dead end eventually and then you're just stuck. Okay, so I hope you liked the intro to Cubase. Thanks. Hopefully I didn't confuse you too bad.